Morning, morning. It is Tuesday morning. Um, just had the bank holiday. Had a good weekend actually. Went up to the fully charged uh, live event up in Farnborough. Um, so pretty interesting to have a look around, see what was uh, see what it was about. I'd say probably the lion's share of the show was really focused on EV, so electric vehicles and uh, EV charging points. Uh, they had a couple of bits there to do with um, you know solar heat pumps. Uh, battery storage um, and that kind of thing basically which was you know it's a, it's a really good event I took took one of my kids one of my kids with me met a couple of the guys from Dory Woodman as well so that was pretty cool we met up with Jordan from Artisan Electrics which is also pretty cool as well we've been watching him on YouTube over the last few uh, well a couple of years really um, and now it is Tuesday so it's the beginning of the week this week due to the bank holiday so I thought actually what I'd probably do is maybe do a bit of a vlog of our week at Dore Woodman just to give you an idea what we get up to on the day to day uh, and some of the either the challenges and some of the things that we need to accomplish in our week and just give you a bit more of an insight as to what we have to do. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, if you are watching for the first time, you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel and also like, share, comment, etc., etc. So let's get to it. Okay, so I made it to the office, bright and breezy, and I was beaten to it. Tom is already here, grafting, first thing this morning. Tom, what time did you get in today? Uh, 6.45, I think it was. Could Good have been point. earlier, but yeah, we've got these reports to do, a few things to get out, and I also need to be on site for about half eight, nine o'clock, so I was just trying to, trying to get it all done. Good man. So actually, what well, was quite a good point now, so, Part of our uh, situation when we're calculating for our solar PV systems, um, the thing is, what we've got in our strength is brains. Duh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom is uh, he's very good on the computer and um, he actually managed to work out how to use CAD effectively for solar PV module um, placements. Um, which is quite important because when we're working from something like uh, Solar Edge or um, even some of the other design technology, when we're working from a PDF uh, or you know from actual plan scale drawings and being able to put that into CAD, we can get more precision when it comes to placement and allowances for panels. Um, so we've been looking at a project and we're kind of looking at how or should I say, Tom's looking at how many panels you could actually put onto a system to still maintain the right spacings between the ridges and the edges of the roof, etc., etc. So it's a really useful tool for us to make sure that we get it completely right. Um, so at the moment, he's got the PDF uh, CAD version. We use PV Sol, which is a, a, a solar PV kind of QMS system as such. It does all your final reports, return of investment, etc., etc. et cetera. Uh, it does like a 365 day simulation of shading, etc. And then obviously we've got something like the Solar Edge design. Now we were referred to this quite often in the very early stages of a PV design. So um, if we know that there's a roof available, so for example, we can check on Google Earth Imaging, for example, and this is what Solar Edge uses, and then we can quickly implement something and say, well, this roof isn't quite right, the orientation isn't right, or we can see that there's loads of opportunity for shading, etc. So we kind of have to, we can get quite a bit of information in the very early stages, and then we can quickly pinpoint, you know, roughly how many panels you could get to a roof, and that gives us our starting point. And then we get into more depth with PDFs and uh, obviously our PV 
So, so, how are you getting on, Tom? All right, we're getting there. Yeah, it's, it's just really good. Like, we can give off off of this software, which is Solar Edge, Jason said, we can get a pretty good idea of like, annual generation, how much um, it's going to produce, and then rough payback period. But yeah, this is PV Cell is the one which does all the, um, takes all the shading factors into account, takes your, your current tariff, takes what, uh, if you've got a payback tariff as well, can t kind of take that into consideration. So you get a much more accurate return of investment. So it's kind of just using all the different pieces to kind of put together to get the best picture for the customer so they know exactly what they can expect um, with a given array. Sweet. So he's going to do that. I've got some other stuff to do with regards to our heat pump installations and some quotations, etc., and proposals to do. So I'm going to crack on with that and we'll catch up soon. Okay, so one of the jobs for today is we are doing a calculation for a project that we looked at, which is on a retrofit, so it's on a, an existing home. Um, the guy's very keen, he's very conscious about the environment, he's already got PV in place, um, he's got a Zappy charger, he's got an Eddy as well, a Minergy Eddy for a solar PV diversion, but he's got a really old oil boiler. Um, and all of these heating system has been installed and calculated to suit uh, a boiler. So what we've had to look at is the heat loss requirements and the radiator sizes for this particular property. So what we use is the Easy MCS um, QMS system just to do some calcs for heat loss, etc., etc. And it, it does have a radiator um, emitters scheduling so you can essentially calculate what size radiators are required. But what we've done is actually formulated our own program here at Dore Woodman, um, courtesy of Josh, our senior engineer. So we can actually get a more calculated or, or focused calculation of what we need to provide for radiator sizing. And um, so we put things in such as, you know, how we calculate for outdoor temperature, what the delta T is gonna be, uh, the flow temperature to which we are looking to aim for, um, the delta T, which will show on the catalogue for any kind of radiator. So you get a delta, you'll get a um, an at delta T of say seventy degrees, for example, or fifty degrees or thirty degrees. Um, then we've got our room design temperature. So we're always aiming for an ambient temperature internally of twenty one degrees, and then we are looking at our mean water temps and. You know, other data T bits, which are a little bit more of a calculation. And then when we put into the required room output, it shows what that is, and then we've got an oversized factor. So we need to be looking for radiator in this example that will be able to produce 13 and 1,323 watts um, to be able to provide enough heat output for said room. So, okay, so that's Tuesday over, which is technically like Monday but it was a bank holiday yesterday it's been a long day it's actually what's 10 to 7 p.m uh been here since about quarter to seven this morning had a few meetings been quite productive so we've had a few proposals that I've had to get out to customers um and on solar pv and um uh heat pumps as well just been looking at i don't know if you can really see it but behind me is a property uh two new builds um in the guildford area where they're considering ground source heat pumps i'm going to give them an option for air source as well because the values of the heat loss calculation you know you could actually put an air source heat pump in there so it's just obviously about you know the the budget into which they want to um what they've got to use essentially um with underfloor heating etc um we're looking at solar pv for it as well which i think you know, when you're going full of electrification on a new build property, you know, solar PV plays a massive part into, you know, obviously being able to generate some of that electricity so there's less demand on the grid. Anyway, have a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, morning, day two, and we are here. It's really sunny. We've got a new build project that we're looking at at the moment where we're going to be putting an air source heat pump in, underfloor heating and i'm just here to just check out and see where they're at with the guys and go through some of the electrical supplies that are required for the electrician on the job right so done that quick visit to the new build project that we're involved with over in west sussex and um 
had to go through a couple of things with the electrician. So essentially the builder contractors got a little bit far too far ahead of themselves over there. So they started to dot and dab walls and um, even plastered a couple of rooms, but the electrician hadn't even put any of the underfloor heat and thermostat wiring in. Um, so he wasn't altogether happy, I don't think, but you know, I said to him, well, because we replicated exactly the same house next door. Um, and I said, well, you need to put the thermostat wiring in, um, you know, to obviously communicate with the heat pump. You can put wireless ones in, of course, but uh, the situation is when you've got certain distances and there's lots of block walls there as well, so bricked up or blocked up walls, um, sometimes that can interfere with, with the signal back to the wiring center. Um, and it's, I think it's far better to have it as a wired thermostat Secondly, then each thermostat's got four batteries in. So if you've got 10, 12 thermostats each year, that's something that's gonna to need to be changed. So now onto the next one, uh, we're gonna go over to a PV installation that we've done, um, that we installed last week. Do a final commissioning, testing, have a look, and uh, we need to complete our video for YouTube. So that's where I'm off to now. Right. Job number two, this is where we've done our PV installation. I'm with Tom. We're gonna to complete our YouTube video, do some commissioning and testing, as I said earlier, and um, just basically do the whole um, shebang about the final part. And we actually, I'll show you quickly how we're on a beautiful sunny day today, which is great. And we'll show you what our generation is at the moment um, from this morning. Um, so I'll quickly show you that through the app right now. Okay, so through our Enphase Enlighten app, we can kind of see the status of the whole installation. Um, and this one particularly, we're gonna look at the system. And first off, um, we're, we know we're on the right job. So if we look at our history, um, so far in its lifetime, we've produced 123.58 kilowatt hours and consumed 125 kilowatt hours of electricity now obviously this is due to night time when you're not producing solar pv so you'll have periods during the day where pv will be outperforming or you'll be producing more uh, electricity generation than you will be consuming in the house so it's those points where you've got to look at you know what's going to be relevant to whether or not you have a battery storage system or whether you uh, don't need to or you use PV diverters to charge electric vehicles and immersions, etc. So you can look at the basic array, and this is how our array looks on top of the roof. Um, and then it will give you kind of a you know panel by panel what output you'll be expecting from each one. And it also can tell you whether or not there's a problem panel. So if there was one that was on zero or 10 or something like that in comparison to the rest, um, being in the 600s or 1.2 kilowatt hours or whatever it might be at any one time, um, then you can quickly point out which one might be the problem. And then we can just look at our graphs. Um, and for example, like for today, for instance, you'll see at different points of the day, um, you know, there's energy being used during the day. And those, that energy um, before the sun's out is actually a fish tank where they've got pump and heaters going on for that fish tank. Um, and funny enough, they didn't actually realize how much that was consuming until they got this graph. And, and obviously the, the monitoring going on for each, um, the monitoring going on for the, for the uh, electrical use and generation, you know, using the CT clamps on the system. Um, but this one, actually, the pattern from consumption to production has followed quite nicely during the day. Um, so it means that, you know, for a lot of the energy that they've been using today, um, you know, the, the PV generation has been keeping up with it as such. Mic, check the mic. Okay, right. Second part of the day is, uh, or second job, should I say, is done now just finished our video youtube video which you'll be able to see which is based on our m phase uh, micro inverters no battery storage on this but we have installed the my energy eddy so check that out there'll be a link just up in the top left hand corner of this um we need to go now to the next job uh, i've got another couple of jobs to go and see i've got to pop into the office quickly and 
Tom's arms aching, so he's um, he's very hungry for some food and a bit of uh, relaxation before he cracks on with the next bit. So anyway, must dash, and I'll see you in just a few. And I'm done for the day. So just finished a meeting with a client on a new build out in kind of the Eden Bridge Calden area, right out in the sticks, a huge place, about 620 odd square meters, ground source heat pump we're dealing with, ground source heat pump, which will be provided um, with uh, boreholes as, as opposed to ground loops. Um, also MVHR, we're, we're uh, in, um, we're dealing with the MVHR system in the property. We're also dealing with the underfloor heating, solar PV, um, it's gonna be quite a big array. So we're looking at circa 50 odd panels. Um, there's a lot of generation gonna be required because of the electrical, um, like, you, you know, the amount of energy that's gonna to need to be consumed in the property with everything being electrical. Um, so we've got all of that going on. Um, air conditioning, looking at air conditioning as well, underfloor heating system. So there's a lot to digest and a lot to get through. So I'm gonna go home now, grab some dinner, and then be ready and fighting fit for tomorrow as it's a new day. Okay, it's Thursday and I am just uh, uh, well prospecting actually this morning so i've been in contact with this uh, client at house behind me who was looking for a heat pump initially done a site survey for these guys uh, a couple of weeks back and um they're keen to move forward so i was just a bit um looking at where we can place the heat pump and taking some measurements and looking at what we would actually need after the heat loss calculation i just want to finalize where we can actually put placement for a heat pump um, see if we can get that decided with the client and then uh, hopefully we can press the press the button to move forward and um, this will be an installation coming up in the next few weeks. Okay, so I think we found a solution and typically when we are installing heat pumps on uh, in a retrofit market as such, so you know on an existing home that already has its heating system in place and hot water cylinder, boiler, whatever it is, um, there's always challenges as to, you know, where we can place the heat pump and then often there's an always an area for the heat pump but then we've got to route our primaries our, our flow and return pipework from the heat pump to a center of the cupboard or to wherever we're going to put a buffer or a low loss head up um, and sometimes that can be the most challenging part because we have to be very specific about the size of the pipework that we use so that we maintain higher flow rates so that we manage our what we call the delta t and obviously be able to provide sufficient heating and hot water at efficient levels so um we found a route we we know we can do it there are a few challenges when it comes to to be able to install this but you know where, where there's a will there's a way um the, the client's very keen you know he's, he's really quite impressed with us as a business as as most people are once they engage with us so uh yeah it's a good prospect so hopefully we'll get all of the finer details done and uh and we'll be back here doing the installation and we'll show you some of the challenges that we've had to look at on this project so. okay location number two we're in red hill and we're doing a an underfloor heat system for a new build for a client uh, which is the building just behind me i'm just going to go and check in on the guys see how they're getting on so here i am with the crew around there we've got the music blaring so you can't even hear ourselves steam making a start on this overlay system up here uh, and we're waiting for a delivery to come actually as well so once that's here the boys can really crack on and get things sorted out waiting for a change waiting for a delivery for a change but um it uh, should be here shortly, so um, I'm going to chase. I'm going to chase them now, actually. So here we are on the third project of the day, where the guys are installing solar PV system. Um, just going to see how they're progressing. I think they're getting the mountain rails up at the moment, and obviously the panels will follow shortly thereafter. So let's go and have a look. Here they are, the crew. 
How are you getting on? Wunderbar. What a beautiful day for it. <laughs> he hasn't done any filming today, Mary. I, I tried to tell him. Why haven't you done any filming today, Tom? We've been, we've been measuring a battery. You had one job to do. I've been sat up here, keep it working my sand. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll make the most of I've it. I've only got one glove. Yeah, I think we left his glove in the in the in the bird protection box. What your wonder grips? Wonder grips, yeah. Okay, so the guys are cracking on here. PV work. It's a lovely day today, which is great. But I do know that in the next twenty four hours, it's going to be raining hard. So they've got the work cut out because they've got to get the mountain rail kit on and hopefully try and get those panels on as well before the bad weather is here otherwise we're going to be working in the rain tomorrow um so i'm off to the office got another meeting uh online with someone and obviously a ton of paperwork to do processing jobs etc etc so i better crack on well doesn't look too bad does it the sun's glistening on them but they're not connected yet so they're not actually generating the beam but one side is done Let's go to the next. <laughs> so we're on the other side of the roof now. It's a bit more shady. Barry's on his third application of sunscreen because obviously he's got to protect himself and he's very sensible at doing so. We've got our six panels up on this side and Tom is getting toe ache where he's been balancing on mountain rails for most of the day. So we're going to get these last six up on the roof and hopefully all will go very well and we'll be oh in fact we've got the hardest part to do yet and that's getting the battery up into the loft all 60 kilograms of a dead weight essentially so uh, we've got reinforcements coming to help us with that yeah light shower light shower if not not a light shower it's a heavy shower <laughs> oh gosh i wish we'd just had another 30 minutes and we'd have been all right uh, we might have to abandon ship, I think, if it carries on like this. <laughs> so there we have it, 12, 420 watt, all black, Jinko Neo Tigers with 12 M-phase micro inverters, east and west facing. We have done it. We have fought through storms. We have fought through sun, sun. <laughs> <laughs> and lack of hydration, but we got there in the end. Um, so next phase is going to be and we also got the alpha battery up in the loft which was a challenge in itself 60 kilowatts and the tightest loft space you could or not space but the tightest loft that you could think of so next next point or next phase of the end phase installation will be linking nice. up the battery doing the electricals bird protection which is barry's favorite and uh commission clean the panels Cut the and we'll be done Cutting the rails down end caps then we're done then we're done yeah so <laughs> Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so it's the end of the week, it's Friday, and uh, it's only a four day week, but my gosh, it feels like I've just done two weeks uh, in a row. Um, we did have, uh, so we, we, we're looking to do an installation, or we are going to do an installation in the Guildford area, which is, um, we've got 20 panels going on, and because of the size of the array, we've had to do a DNO, which is the district network organization where you have to submit uh, a G99 form because it goes past the G98 uh, allowance of up to 16 amps and 3.68 kilowatts. So we're about six kilowatt um, inverter, hybrid inverter with battery storage. But we, we basically have about two different DNOs that we would tend to deal with. Um, I'd say, mostly and luckily for us is the UK Power Network, so UKPN. Um, and they are much quicker at responding and dealing with G99s, G98s, etc. Um, and it's a far easier process to deal with them. So we prefer ones that are with the UK Power Network. Anyway, we have one that's come through finally after about seven weeks of waiting from SSEN. Um, and it was a really difficult process it took such a long time so we finally got our agreement for it and the customer is 
extremely happy because he's been waiting on tender hooks. There's certain things that he wants to do to his house and he couldn't do it until we could get the, the go ahead because if we couldn't get the G99 then we'd have to change our plans and what we're going to do moving forward. So we managed to get the, the form from the DNO and oh my goodness. So we hadn't anticipated or allowed for any charges because unless there was anything they had to do on the grid and we thought if there's anything to go on the, do on the grid then usually you know someone might have to pay for that and whether that's an upgrade to the supply coming into the building or uh, something on the meter nothing like that they said yeah absolutely fine the, the the grid can take the the load basically in terms of any exporting coming back in through the grid um, but they have been looking and they want to charge us 300 pounds plus the VAT. So we were kind of like, damn it. So we've spoken to the customer and we said, look, we're really sorry. We weren't anticipating this extra cost. Um, so we've kind of had to say to them that it's more, it's, it's basically an admin fee essentially um, for the work that they had done over there. So anyone who's doing a DNO using SSEN uh, be aware that there could be any kind of formal charges where it doesn't have to be literally physical work it could just be admin work um, unless you are part of their uh, installer program as such which is another massive process to do anyway got to process some of this got to get the scaffolders and everything organized get the material and stuff sorted out for the project itself and booking the date with the client to get things underway also got a call this morning with uh, another potential um, installation for a, for a heat pump so i was going for a massive restoration looking for a heat pump mvhr and solar pv well, it's been a mad week this week. It's been so busy, um, but hopefully you've enjoyed some of the journey. I mean, I'm still in the office now. I got here at quarter to seven this morning. It's half five and I'm meant to be going out at seven. It's gonna take me about 45 minutes to get home. Gotta get showered, changed, say hello to the kids and the wife, and then I'm back out again. So, um, but you know, it's just one of those, it gets it is busy. There's a lot to do all of the time, and anyone who works as uh, in this industry, particularly with the renewables, I mean every business, you know, any business owner and and um, you know, managing director of, of a company, you know, you always have to put in that that extra effort, and uh, you know, you, you can you can never switch off, um, and that's because you care, and you know, it's a big part of of, of obviously of your life, etc. So, uh, you know, we pride ourselves on, on what we do here at Dory Woodman by going above and beyond, you know, and making sure that everything is as precise as we possibly can and getting everything right for not just the, the our current clients, but the ones moving forward as well. <clears throat> um, so, you know, we've had so many different things coming in this week, um, even some older inquiries so you know we we tend to do some proposals for example for um you know architects that are tendering out for south builders for example um and they might be at the, at the planning stage so they need to obviously put their tenders in and see what um what kind of budgets they got to work to and what they need to implement into different properties etc um and we work very closely with many architects so you know it kind of comes through as a recommendation and if the planning and everything goes through um, you know, we're quite hopeful that we will engage with them later on when they're ready. But you do forget about, you know, some of the, some of the um, projects that might have come through because, you know, it could have been six, eight months ago. I mean, we've had some that have come through after, you know, 12, 15 months. And uh, you suddenly look at it and you think, great. But then you realise that, you know, in 12 or 15 months, there's been about three or four price increases in the meantime. So you have to readjust all your costings to, to you know, accommodate for that. Um, but, you know, it's good. We've got some really good work coming across. We've got some great customers that we're going to be working for. Um, you've probably seen already, if you've been following us on social media and watching our YouTube videos, you know, the guys work extremely hard. We're extremely proud of the team and it is a team effort, you know, from you know, whether someone's got to answer the phone or someone's got to go out and do an installation or someone's got to go and solve a problem or a situation or, or a fault find or something. You know, everyone's as important as each other. Um, you know, yesterday, for example, I was in here, um, 
for a lot of the time. We went and saw a couple of uh, different projects that we were on just to keep an eye on the guys and what they needed. And it got to about half four, quarter to five. And I know the guys were struggling over a, um, a PV job because they were just wanting to get a certain amount of stuff done prior to you know any bad weather that was you know due for for today in fact it wasn't that bad today so um we probably didn't need to to stretch as far as we did but anyway you know a couple of the guys come back on their way home from work gave us a hand getting the um, battery up into the loft it was quite heavy so it needed like at least four of us to be able to maneuver that and get it up there safely and then we had to finish off trying to get the panels up on the roof so that you know all just the internal stuff could be uh, dealt with today and again we just help each other out we get the job done and um you know and actually it was quite a good idea really when you think about it because today they've managed to get a little bit more done um they'll get the system up and commission and then next week it'll just be a case of snagging work going through the system with the customer making sure everything's working as it should do um so yeah onwards and upwards um if you've enjoyed this video please share like comment uh, and subscribe if you want any more content like this with uh, or if there's a particular subject or something you want us to you know be involved with or um or, or basically video and, and give you examples of then please let us know and we'll do so for you not a problem at all but anyway it's the king's coronation this weekend and um we're going to be celebrating that over the bank holiday um doing some bits and pieces with the kids get a bit of a well-earned rest for the weekend and we'll get back to it on tuesday ta for now and we'll see you guys on the next one